In the old days, the biggest problem was finding information. Today, your biggest problem is figuring out what information is truthful and what's a lie. So I'm devoting this last segment of our section on problem solving to the problem of how do you tell when somebody's lying? Let's start now with this wonderful Jimmy Kimmel segment um, recorded before the 2016 election in which he, people were asked how they voted. They could not have possibly voted, but it's amazing to watch people lie. Enjoy. Most everyone you meet says they're planning to vote, but we want to do our own test of that. So we went out in the street last Tuesday. And we asked if people have gone to the polls and voted in the midterms that day. Of course, the midterms didn't happen last Tuesday. They happened tomorrow. And just to be clear, the folks you're about to see are not early voters, voters by mail. These are people who were falsely claiming they went to their polling place that morning in tonight's midterm voter edition of Lie Witness News. Tell me all about what it was like this morning when you voted in the historic midterm election. Was your polling place busy? Not too bad? Um, not too bad, actually. Not as busy as I thought it would be. How long did you wait to vote? Um, like 30 minutes, which is, I think, not too bad for a place like Hollywood. <laughs> What was it like at your polling place this morning when you voted? It was super busy. A lot of people were coming out. More people want to be involved in voting. So it was really, really cool to see that. Did you have to present an ID or they let you go without one? Um, I had to present my ID. What ID did you present at the polls this morning? Um, my driver's license. What backup ID did you show as well? Oh, my school ID. And what was the third backup? Um, I, I had a credit card. Did you vote for Senate, Congress, Supreme Court, or President today? Uh, honestly? Yeah. Like, um... I voted for Supreme Court and the other ones just because. Yeah. Did they hand out anything besides free stickers at your polling place? Did they hand out those bacon wrapped hot dogs? No bacon wrapped hot dogs. There was cookies. Oh, what kind of cookie did you get? Chocolate chip. Ooh, how did that taste? It was good. Okay. Chewy. Chewy. So did you vote yes on Proposition 9? Uh, yes, I did. Why do you think it's a good idea to make medicinal aspirin illegal? Uh, it's just because, like, with any type of medication, it can be addictive, so I just want to be careful. Sure. Did you vote yes or no on Proposition 91? No. What were you afraid the orphans would spend that money on? No, son. How did you vote on Proposition 91? No. Why? It just didn't give me the right feeling. Who did you vote for for LA Unified School District student body president, Aiden or Kayla? Uh, oh my gosh. I think I voted for Aiden. Would you like an I voted sticker? Sure. And again, you can only have the sticker if you actually voted. So you actually voted today? Yeah. Okay. Do you swear? I swear. Do you swear on your life? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but it came off, so thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Or I didn't. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Wasn't that funny? Uh, today, there is a big problem with the number of lies that you're faced with every day. Um, in 2006, Stephen Colbert came up with the idea or the, the word truthiness to refer to ideas that felt right. That made them truthful, how they felt, not whether they were actually accurate. And as you'll see, that was a very thoughtful concept that Colbert um, developed. We do have a problem with deciding what's true and what's false, because if something feels right, if our feelings suggest that it's right, then we conclude that the information is truthful. We don't use science, we use emotions. Okay, so first of all, what does it mean to lie? What is deception? Well, I want you to know that deception is defined as the intention of misleading someone. So it's not when you go to a theater and see actors acting, it's not um, a pathological disorder uh, or mental illness, that's not lying because the intention isn't there. It isn't telling a falsehood because you didn't have accurate information, right? You tried to convey the information as accurately as you could, but you were wrong because the information was wrong, not because you intended to lie. 
Also, lying has to have some advantage for the person who's telling the lie. It has to give them uh, some advantage or enable them to avoid some penalty. The average person tells two lies a day. Uh, those lies are typically the lies that we tell people so that we don't hurt their feelings. For example, wow, that new haircut looks great on you. Professors will tell one another at conferences, oh, I'm so sorry I missed your talk. I'm like they never intended on going in the first place. In some cultures, these little white lies are more acceptable than telling the truth. I'm like, oh, that haircut's awful. Little white lies are surprisingly hard to detect. We fall for them. Okay, so speaking of falling for it, tell me which of the following statements is true. One, People typically reveal their lies by fidgeting, acting nervous, avoiding con eye contact. Two, therefore we are rather good lie detectors, unless we're just a dumb person, but generally we're pretty good at detecting other people's lies. Three, it's especially true that we can detect lying when it occurs with people we're close to, people we know well. Four, criminals and professional crooks are harder for us to spot. Right, criminals are better liars. But thankfully, five uh, trained professionals like the FBI and the police and judges are really good lie detectors. And so they protect us from excellent liars. So which of those statements is true? None of them, they're all wrong. Let's go for an example. So many of you use social media. Here's two Facebook posts, one is true, and the other is false. Can you identify which Facebook post supports feminism? Is it the one on the left or the right? It's the one on the right. The post on the left was from a fake account. The post on the right was from Feminist News. Okay, how about this one? One of these posts is about Latin American heritage. Which one is the accurate, honest post and which is a fake post? The one on the left was the true post. Um, here are two apparent posts about self-care. One is from a fake uh, Facebook account and the other is from a real Facebook account. Which one's fake, left or right? The one on the left was the correct uh, actual Facebook post from Revolutionary Self Care. The one on the right was part of an influence operation and uh, Facebook had it removed. How about this last one? Uh, how about the post on the left? Teach our youth how to be good businessmen, not good employees. Or uh, black elevation. Which one of those is real and which is a fake post? The true one was on the left, the fake post was on the right, it was again part of an influence operation that Facebook had to remove. So actually I picked those stimuli, those precise stimuli, because they came from an experiment in which uh, subjects were asked to do exactly what you just did, pick the, uh, identify the fake or the true Facebook post. And you just saw four, uh, only or less than 20% of people are able to pick out all of the fake Facebook posts. In other words, we're crummy at knowing whether something is truthful or a lie. And that gets to a concept that I really want you to know because it's, it's happening everywhere right now. Illusory truth effect. The illusory truth effect. It turns out if you hear fake or non-truthful information over and over again, you start to believe it. Yeah, repeated exposure to the same information makes that information seem truer. That's the illusory truth effect. And it has devastating consequences for social media. Here's the thing, what do people retweet? Well, they don't retweet stuff they see all the time, right? You don't retweet boring stuff, stuff anybody sees. You retweet new and interesting things. Well, what's novel? Lies are novel. So it turns out that fake news stories are 70% more likely to be retweeted 
than truthful news stories. 70% more likely. Ah. Um, on the internet, falsehoods, lies, spread six times faster than truths. A truthful tweet is almost never forwarded more than a thousand times, but 1% of falsehoods are forwarded a hundred thousand times. Novelty explains this effect, right? We retweet things that are novel and interesting. Lies are by definition new. So uh, how does the illusory truth effect motivate all of this? Uh, illusory truth effect, remember, if you hear something repeatedly, you believe it's more true. Why is that? It turns out that it has to do with processing fluency. The easier it is for you to understand something, the more likely you believe it's truthful. The easier it is for you to understand something, the easy stories sound more truthful than the complicated stories. Now, what happens if you hear the same message over and over and over again? Well, you've heard it a lot, so it gets easier and easier to process. And therefore, because it's easier to process, now you start to believe it's a truth. Repeated statements are easier to process and therefore more likely to believe, be believed as the truth. Other things that make things more likely to be judged as truthful, Things that rhyme, it turns out. For those of you in Los Angeles, uh, the O.J. Simpson trial, if it does not fit, you must acquit. That was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I remember it decades later, right? So it's easy to remember, it's nice and succinct. It works. This is where psychology has failed the U.S., in my opinion, during the COVID pandemic. Psychologists should have been putting our heads together, trying to think of ways to make it really easy for people to understand the power of wearing a mask in protecting people from COVID. So rhyming makes things sound more believable. And this one, you're not gonna, it's just stunning. If you make something easier to see, I literally use higher contrast or bigger font, people are more likely to believe it. So down here, I have the same sentence printed twice. If you see something in bright print and ask people if it's true or false, more people will tell you that the top sentence is true than will tell you that the bottom sentence is true. They're exactly the same information, exactly the same sentence, and yet we use the ease of processing that's easy for me to see, so it must be truthful, as an indicator of truthfulness. Yikes. There's all sorts of cues that are available for you to use to figure out, at least when you're talking to somebody face to face through Zoom, am I lying or am I telling you the truth? So for example, you could use my posture, the sort of gestures that I constantly use, micro expressions, am I smiling, am I, am I blinking? Um, do I look like I'm flushed? Does it look like I'm sweating? Um, how am I saying things? Am I repeating myself? Am I being confusing? There's all these signals that in theory we could use to identify liars. But how good are we actually at identifying liars? Here is a meta study of several studies on human deception detection. Basically, spot the liar. Now these studies are designed so the chance performance, if you're just guessing, is 50%, right? So half the time you're seeing somebody tell the truth and half the time someone's lying. So let's start with students because most experiments are run with students. There's been at least 122 studies of deception detection amongst students. And what is the overall accuracy rate? 54%. Remember, 50 is chance. 54%. You might say, well, okay, students aren't very good at it, but let's take judges and cops. They must be fantastic at identifying who's lying and who's telling the truth. Oh God, judges and cops are 59% and 55% accurate in their judgments under experimental conditions of liars. Detectives, 51%. 
Parole officers, 40%. Who's the best at detecting liars? Criminals, 65%. Still, 65% correct is you're not going to get excited about it, but it's a whole lot better than 40%. Isn't that crazy? Why does this happen or what's happening here? Well, there's really very little correlation or association between how accurately people can identify lies and their belief in how good they are at identifying lies. And that's a bad thing, right? People tend to be very overconfident in their ability to identify the truth and to identify lies. One thing in this set of studies that people find over and over again is experts are not more accurate than novices. They're just as bad as novices, but they're more confident. Okay, that's my lecture on problem solving. Take care.